On the headlines, seven-year-old girl awakens government on gun violence issues. Anti-reproductive health suit. Filed in Supreme Court. In politics, Malikan Yang defends the legality of Governor Garcia's suspension. On business sector, Philippine stock exchange moves closer to 6,000 level. In sports, a three-year contract to offer by Sanveda to Boyet Fernandez. For our feed your webcast, Philippines, welcome to the year of the water snake. Greetings Philippines, I am Edward. And, I'm Katrina. Welcome, Welcome to, to One, one Pilipinas webcast. webcast. On the headlines, seven-year-old girl awakens government on gun violence issues. While the report from DOH says that there was a significant reduction of incidents due to firecrackers this recent New Year's Eve celebration, still, there were deaths happened due to stray bullets coming from few irresponsible persons who wanted to just show off and add noise during the said celebration, using guns. One of the victims from this irresponsibility was seven years old Stephanie Ella. Stephanie died due to a gunshot wound from the head while she and her father was watching fireworks during the New Year's Eve celebration outside their home in Manila. Ella's ordeal, however, was prominently covered in national media as her grief-stricken parents tensely waited by her hospital bedside as doctors lost the battle to save her. Stephanie Yella's death ignites an outrage and condemnation on poor law enforcement to gun holders, mostly on thousands having unregistered firearms. On his statement, Vice President of the Philippines, G. Jamar Bine said that this incident should not be allowed to become just another statistic. We have enough laws to penalize, but the problem has always been in the enforcement of laws. The Vice President challenges the Philippine National Police to prove their effectiveness and catch the person responsible for Ella's death. Furthermore, a four-year-old boy also died, and another 16-year-old got comatose as a result of the same incident happened to Stephanie Ella. The One Pilipinas webcast team, along with the responsible and good Filipinos all over, condemns the death of Stephanie Ella, along with the other victims of this gun incident. For the complete story, visit Anti-Reproductive Health Suit Filed in Supreme Court Anti-RH Suit Was filed in Supreme Court, which at the same time was accepted by Malakan Yang Palace, although the petitions was derided by the later. James Mbong, son of CBCP legal counsel, Joe Mbong and Lovely and Mbong headed the petition arguing that the RH law is unconstitutional, thus, the government should be stopped on implementing this act. To clarify, Father Melvin Castro, Executive Secretary of the CBCP Episcopal Commission on Family and Life said that, James M. Bong, being the son of CBCP legal counsel, was only incidental. Joe M. Bong is a collaborating counsel in the case. In their petition for certiorari and prohibition, the M. Bong said, the law introduced policies that negate and frustrate the foundational ideals and aspirations of the sovereign Filipino. Presidential spokesperson, Secretary Edwin Lasierda said, it was good that lawyer couple, James and Lovely and Mbong filed a case because now the government, through the office of the Solicitor General, will be prepared to defend the RH law. The contention that was raised by Mr. James Mbong is not something new, it had already been raised during the debates. Albay representative Edsel Lagman, on the other hand, decried the petition. According to him, it was a premature petition because it seeks to prevent the implementation of a law which is not yet in effect. Republic Act No. 10354 The Responsible Parenthood and Reproductive Health Law was designed to provide and support reproductive health services, including access to contraceptives and information on family planning to couples that ask for it and age appropriate sex education to school children. RH law is scheduled to take effect on January 17th or 15 days after its publication in a periodical of general circulation. For the complete story, visit In politics, Malakan Yang defends the legality of Governor Garcia's suspension. 
The palace defended the legality of Cebu Governor Garcia's six-month suspension favoring the complaint of late Vice Governor Gregorio Sanchez Jr. in 2010. Garcia petitioned that the administrative complaint should have been dismissed since the complainant had already passed away in April 2011 and was not substituted in the case, and that there was no suspension order received at her office. Solicitor General Francis Hardellesa said that the Office of the President and the Department of the Interior and Local Government did not violate any law in issuing and serving the suspension order last month. OSG argued that the decision of the OP in administrative cases is final and executory, and an appeal does not prevent the decision from becoming so. OSG on Garcia's complaint stressed that, once an administrative complaint is given due course, the government becomes the real aggrieved party, and the complainant's death will not exonerate the public official of administrative charges and the suspension order. For the claim of Garcia that she did not receive a memorandum, the memo was posted at the door of her office. Sanchez, in his complaint, accused Garcia of usurping his authority by slashing his budget for the salary of contractual employees under his office. For the complete story, visit On business sector, Philippine stock exchange moves closer to 6,000 level on its second trading day of the Philippine stock market. The Philippine Stock Exchange PSE, index edged closer to the 6,000 level. As of January 2nd closing, the PSE plotted 5,934.05, up 73.06 points or 1.25%, beating Wednesday's ending tally at 5,860.99. In 2012, Philippine Stock Exchange Index posted an annual growth of 33%, setting a new and highest record in the history. PSE President and CEO Han Sika said, The stock market's performance in 2012 rewrote the record books in a big way, as seen in the new highs we've experienced across almost all market indicators. Investor confidence in Philippines is also at an all-time high, and this can only serve to strengthen our market as we tackle new challenges and opportunities in 2013. For a complete story, visit in sports, a three-year contract to offer by Sanbeda to Boyet Fernandez, the undisputed NCAA champion, Sanbeda, in line with its effort to maintain dominance in NCAA, the country's oldest collegiate basketball league, plans to offer new coach Fernandez a three-year contract. Sanbeda team manager. Jude Roki said that, we're hoping that he stays longer so we'll offer him at least a three-year contract. The Lions already have been through three coaches in the last seven years. On the other hand, Bahia Fernandez, who got the call from Sanbita chief backer Manny V. Pangilinan, said, I am grateful for the opportunity. It's a blessing, but there are a lot of challenges ahead, and I have huge shoes to fill because of the legacy left by coach Ronnie and coach Frankie. For the complete story, visit <music> Philippines Let Me Turn Over You Now to Katrina for our weather updates and featured webcast. On weather updates for Luzon and Visayas on Saturday morning. Up to midday, rain showers will be experienced and will become cloudy in the evening. And for Mindanao, mild rain showers at early morning and in the evening. Mostly cloudy in other areas. Sun rises by 5.50 a.m. and sets by 5.30 in the afternoon. For more in detailed weather forecast, visit For our featured webcast, Philippines, welcome to the Year of the Water Snake. A video from YouTube, from the ABS-CBN News Channel. Let's take a look on what Chinese astrologers are saying for this year.
take a look at exactly what feng shui is about and what they're saying about 2013, the year of the water snake. According to the Chinese Zodiac, all things are possible in 2013, the year of the water snake. By nature, snakes are cautious, vigilant, mysterious, and wise. If 2012 ended relatively well economically, feng shui experts say expect a rosy financial market in 2013. To gain the greatest benefits from 2013, spending must be kept in check and talents used wisely. Those planning to get married or to start a business partnership should carefully check their business partner's finances and background. It's also important to stay alert as delusion and deception are common in the year of the water snake. Being an election year, feng shui experts say, expect action, a lot of noise and controversies, especially in the race for local elected positions. Like 2012, the monkey will continue to enjoy positive vibrations in 2013, which also bodes well for the rat, ox, and rooster. The dragon and dog will not be far behind. The positivity of the water snake trickles in well before the start of the Chinese calendar on February 10, 2013 until January 30, 2014. <laughs> And that completes our episode for today. Thank you for watching One Pillow Penis webcast. I am Edward. And I am Katrina. Get, Get inspired, inspired and, and be a proud Filipino. Filipino.